All right, first up today, G8C, Digital Emission Modes. G8C01 says, on what band do amateurs share channels with unlicensed Wi-Fi service? A, 432 megahertz. B, 902 megahertz. C, 2.4 gigahertz. Or D, 10.7 gigahertz. Correct answer here is C, 2.4 gigahertz. G8C02, on which digital mode is used as a low power beacon for assessing HF propagation? A. WSPR B. Olivia C. PSK31 or D. SSB-SC Correct answer is A. WSPR G8C03 Which part of a packet radio frame contains their routing and handling information? A. Directory B. Preamble C. Header or D. Footer Correct answer is C. Header G8C04 Which of the following describes BODET code? A. A 7-bit code with start, stop, and parity bits. B. A code using error detection and correction. C. A 5-bit code with additional start and stop bits. Or D. A code using cell cal and listen. Answer is C. A 5-bit code with additional start and stop bits. G8C05. In the Pactor protocol, what is meant by a NAC response to a transmitted packet? A. The receiver is requesting the packet be retransmitted. B. The receiver is reporting the packet was received without error. C. The receiver is busy decoding the packet. Or D. The entire file has been received correctly. Answer is A. The receiver is requesting the packet be retransmitted. G8C06. What action results from a failure to exchange information due to excessive transmission attempts when using Pactor or WinMore? A. The checksum overflows. B. The connection is dropped. C. Packets will be routed incorrectly. Or D. Encoding reverts to the default character set. Answer is B. The connection is dropped. G8C07. How does the receiving station respond to an ARQ data mode packet containing errors? A. It terminates the contact. B. It requests the packet be retransmitted. C. It sends the packet back to the transmitting station. Or D. It requests a change in transmitting protocol. G8C08. Which of the following statements is true about PSK31? A. Uppercase letters are sent with more power. B. Uppercase letters are used longer varicode bit sequences and thus slow down transmission. C. Error correction is used to ensure accurate message reception. Or D, higher power is needed as compared to RTTY for similar error rates. Correct answer is B, uppercase letters use longer varicode bit sequences and thus slow down transmission. G8, C09, what does the number 31 represent in PSK31? A, the approximate transmitted symbol rate. B, the version of the PSK protocol. C, the year in which PSK31 was invented. Or D, the number of characters that can be represented by PSK31. Answer is A, the approximate transmitted symbol rate. G8C10, how does forward error correction allow the receiver to correct errors in received data packets? A, by controlling transmitter output power for optimal signal strength. B, by using the varicode character set. C, by transmitting redundant information with the data or D, by using a parity bit with each character? Answer is C, by transmitting redundant information with the data. G8C11, how are the two separate frequencies of a frequency shift keyed signal identified? A, a dot and a dash, B, an on and an off, C, high and low, or D, mark and space? Answer is D, mark and space. G8C12, which type of code is used for sending characters in a PSK31 signal? A. Varicode. B. Vitterby. C. Volumetric. Or D. Binary. Answer is A. Varicode. G8C13, what is indicated on the waterfall display by one or more vertical lines on either side of a digital signal? A. Long path propagation. B. Backscatter propagation. C. Insufficient modulation or D, overmodulation? Answer is D, overmodulation. G8C14, which of the following describes a waterfall display? A, frequency is horizontal, signal strength is vertical, time is intensity, B, frequency is vertical, 
Signal strength is intensity. Time is horizontal. C. Frequency is horizontal. Signal strength is intensity. Time is vertical. Or D. Frequency is vertical. Signal strength is horizontal. Time is intensity. Correct answer is C. Frequency is horizontal. Signal strength is intensity. Time is vertical. Next up, sub-element G9 covering antennas and feed lines. G9A covers antenna feed lines, characteristic impedance and attenuation, SWR calculation, measurement and effects, and matching networks. G9A01, which of the following factors determine the characteristics of impedance of a parallel conductor antenna feed line? A. The distance between the centers of the conductors and the radius of the conductors. B. The distance between the centers of the conductors and the length of the line. C. The radius of the conductors and the frequency of the signal. Or D. The frequency of the signal and the length of the line. Answer is A. The distance between the centers of the conductors and the radius of the conductors. G9A02. What are the typical characteristic impedance of coaxial cable used in antenna feed lines at amateur stations? A. 25 and 30 ohms. B. 50 and 75 ohms. C. 80 and 100 ohms. Or D. 500 and 750 ohms. Correct answer is B. 50 and 75 ohms. G9A03. What is the typical characteristic impedance of window line parallel transmission line? A. 50 ohms. B. 75 ohms. C. 100 ohms. Or D. 450 ohms. The answer is D. 450 ohms. G9A04. What might cause reflected power at the point where a feed line connects to an antenna? A. Operating an antenna at its resonant frequency. B. Using more transmitter power than the antenna can handle. C. A difference between feed line impedance and antenna feed point impedance. Or D. Feeding the antenna with an unbalanced feed line. Answer is C. A difference between feed line impedance and antenna feed point impedance. G9A05. How does the attenuation of coaxial cable change as the frequency of the signal it is carrying increases. A. Attenuation is independent of frequency. B. Attenuation increases. C. Attenuation decreases. Or D. Attenuation reaches a maximum at approximately 18 MHz. Answer is B. Attenuation increases. G9A06. In what units is RF feed line loss usually expressed? A. Ohms per 1,000 feet. B. Decibels per 1,000 feet. C. Ohms per 100 feet. Or D. Decibels per 100 feet. Correct answer is D. Decibels per 100 feet. G9A07. What must be done to prevent standing waves on an antenna feed line? A. The antenna feed point must be at DC ground potential. B. The feed line must be cut to a length equal to an odd number of electrical quarter wavelengths. C. The feed line must be cut to a length equal to an even number of physical half wavelengths. Or D. The antenna feed point impedance must be matched to the characteristic impedance of the feed line. Answer is D. The antenna feed point impedance must be matched to the characteristic impedance of the feed line. G9A08. If the SWR on an antenna feed line is 5 to 1 and a matching network at the transmitter end of the feed line is adjusted, to 1 to 1 SWR, what is the resulting SWR on the feed line? A. 1 to 1. B. 5 to 1. C. Between 1 and 1 and 5 to 1 depending on the characteristic impedance of the line. Or D. Between 1 and 1 and 5 to 1 depending on the reflected power at the transmitter. Correct answer is B. 5 to 1. G9A09. What standing wave ratio will result when connecting a 50 ohm feed line to a non-reactive load? having 200 ohm impedance. A, 4 to 1. B, 1 to 4. C, 2 to 1. Or D, 1 to 2. Answer here is A, 4 to 1. G9A10, what standing wave ratio will result when connecting a 50 ohm feed line to a non-reactive load having 10 ohm impedance? A, 2 to 1. B, 50 to 1. C, 1 to 5. Or D, 5 to 1. Answer is D, 5 to 1. 
G9A11, what standing wave ratio will result when connecting a 50 ohm feed line to a non-reactive load having 50 ohm impedance? A, 2 to 1, B, 1 to 1, C, 50 to 50, or D, 0, 0? Answer is B, 1 to 1. G9A12, what is the interaction between high standing wave ratio and transmission line loss? A. There is no interaction between transmission line loss and SWR. B. If a transmission line is lossy, high SWR will increase the loss. C. High SWR makes it difficult to measure transmission line loss. Or D. High SWR reduces the relative effect of transmission line loss. Correct answer is B. If a transmission line is lossy, high SWR will increase the loss. G9A13, what is the effect of transmission line loss on SWR measured at the input to the line? A, the higher transmission line loss, the more the SWR will read artificially low. B, the higher the transmission line loss, the more the SWR will read artificially high. C, the higher the transmission line loss, the more accurate the SWR measurement will be. Or D, transmission line loss does not affect the SWR measurement. Answer is A. The higher the transmission line loss, the more the SWR will read artificially low. G9B, basic antennas. G9B01 says, what is one disadvantage of a directly fed random wire HF antenna? A, it must be longer than one wavelength. B, you may experience RF burns when touching metal objects inside your station. C, it produces only vertically polarized radiation. Or D, it is more effective on the lower HF bands than on the higher bands. Answer is B. You may experience RF burns when touching metal objects in your station. G9B02. Which of the following is a common way to adjust the feed point impedance of a quarter wave ground plane vertical antenna to be approximately 50 ohms? A. Slope the radials upward. B. Slope the radials downward. C. Lengthen the radials. Or D. Shorten the radials. Answer is B. Slope the radials downward. G9B03, which of the following best describes the radiation pattern of a quarter wave ground plane vertical antenna? A. Bidirectional in azimuth. B. Isotropic. C. Hemispherical. Or D. Omnidirectional in azimuth. Correct answer is D. Omnidirectional in azimuth. G9B04, what is the radiation pattern of a dipole antenna in free space in a plane containing the conductor? A. It is a figure 8 at right angles to the antenna. B. It is a figure 8 off both ends of the antenna. C. It is a circle equal radiation in all directions. Or D. It has a pair of lobes on one side of the antenna and a single lobe on the other side. Answer is A. It is a figure 8 at right angles to the antenna. G9B05. How does the antenna height affect the horizontal or azimuthal radiation pattern? of a horizontal dipole HF antenna. A. If the antenna is too high, the pattern becomes unpredictable. B. Antenna height has no effect on the pattern. C. If the antenna is less than half wavelength high, the azimuthal pattern is almost omnidirectional. D. If the antenna is less than half wavelength high, radiation off the ends of the wire is eliminated. Answer is C. If the antenna is less than half wavelength high, the azimuthal pattern is almost omnidirectional. G9B06, where should radial wires of a ground-mounted vertical antenna system be placed? A, as high as possible above the ground. B, parallel to the antenna element. C, on the surface of the earth or buried a few inches below the ground. Or D, at the center of the antenna. Answer is C, on the surface of the earth or buried a few inches below the ground. G9B07, how does the feed point impedance of a half-wave dipole antenna change as the antenna is lowered below quarter wave above ground? A. It steadily increases. B. It steadily decreases. C. It peaks at about one-eighth wavelength above ground. Or D. It is unaffected by the height above ground. Answer is B. It steadily decreases. G9 B08, how does the feed point impedance of a half wave dipole change as the feed point is moved from the center towards the ends? A, it steadily increases. B, it steadily decreases. C, it peaks at about one eighth wavelength from the end. Or D, it is unaffected by the location of the feed point. Answer is A, it steadily increases. G9B09, which of the following is an advantage of a horizontally polarized as a compared to a vertically polarized HF antenna. A. Lower ground reflection losses. B. Lower feed point impedance. C. Shorter radials. Or D. Lower radiation resistance. 
Answer is A, lower ground reflection losses. G9B10, what is the approximate length up for a half-wave dipole antenna cut for 14.250 megahertz? A, 8 feet, B, 16 feet, C, 24 feet, or D, 32 feet? Correct answer is D, 32 feet. G9B11, what is the approximate length of a half-wave dipole antenna cut for 3.550 megahertz? A, 42 feet, B, 84 feet, C, 131 feet, or D, 263 feet? Correct answer is C, 131 feet. G9B12, what is the approximate length of a quarter-wave vertical antenna cut for 28.5 megahertz? A, 8 feet, B, 11 feet, C, 16 feet, or D, 21 feet? Correct answer is A, 8 feet. G9C, directional antennas. G9C01, which of the following would increase the bandwidth of a Yagi antenna? A, larger diameter elements. B, closer element spacing. C, loading coils in series with the element. Or D, tapered diameter elements. Answer is A, larger diameter elements. G9C02, what is the approximate length of the driven element of a Yagi antenna? A, quarter wavelength. B, half wavelength. C, three-quarter wavelength, or D, one wavelength? Answer is B, half wavelength. G9C03, how do the lengths of a three-element Yagi reflector and director compare to that of the driven element? A, the reflector is longer and the director is shorter. B, the reflector is shorter and the director is longer. C, they are all the same length. Or D, relative length depends on the frequency of operation. Answer is A. The reflector is longer and the director is shorter. G9C04. How does the antenna gain stated in DBI compare to gain stated in DVD for the same antenna? A. DBI gain figures are 2.15 dB lower than the DBD gain figures. B. DBI gain figures are 2.15 dB higher than the DBD gain figures. C. DBI gain figures are the same as the square root of the DBD gain figures multiplied by 2.15. Or D. DBI gain figures are the reciprocal of the DBD gain figures plus 2.15 dB. Correct answer is B. DBI gain figures are 2.15 dB higher than DBD gain figures. G9C05. How does increasing boom length and adding directors affect a Yagi antenna? A. Gain increases. B. Beam width increases. C. Front to back ratio decreases. Or D. Front to side ratio decreases. Correct answer is A. Gain increases. G9C06. What configuration of the loops of a two element quad antenna must be used for the antenna to operate as a beam antenna assuming one of the elements is used as a reflector? A. The driven element must be fed with a Ballin transformer. B. There must be an open circuit in the driven element at the point of the opposite feed point. C. The reflector element must be approximately 5% shorter than the driven element. Or D. The reflector element must be approximately 5% longer than the driven element. Correct answer is D. The reflector element must be approximately 5% longer than the driven element. G9C07, what does front-to-back ratio mean in reference to a Yagi antenna? A, the number of directors versus the number of reflectors. B, the relative position of the driven element with respect to the reflectors or directors. C, the power radiated in the major radiation lobe compared to that in the opposite direction. Or D, the ratio of forward gain to dipole gain. Answer is C, the power radiated in the major radiation lobe compared to that in the opposite direction. G9C08, what is meant by the main lobe of a directive antenna? A, the magnitude of the maximum vertical angle of radiation. B, the point of maximum current in a radiating antenna element. C, the maximum voltage standing wave point on a radiating element. Or D, the direction of maximum radiated field strength from the antenna. Answer is D, the direction of maximum radiated field strength from the antenna. G9C09, how does the gain of two three-element horizontally polarized Yagi antennas spaced vertically 
half wavelength apart typically compare to the gain of a single three element Yagi. A. Approximately 1.5 dB higher. B. Approximately 3 dB higher. C. Approximately 6 dB higher. Or D. Approximately 9 dB higher. Correct answer is B. Approximately 3 dB higher. G9C10. Which of the following can be adjusted to optimize forward gain, front to back ratio, or SWR bandwidth of a Yagi antenna? A. The physical length of the boom. B. The number of elements on the boom. C. The spacing of each element along the boom. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Correct answer is D. All of these choices are correct. G9C11. Which HF antenna would be best for use for minimizing interference? A. A quarter wave vertical antenna. B. An isotropic antenna. C. A directional antenna. Or D. An omnidirectional antenna. Correct answer is C. A directional antenna. G9C12. Which of the following is an advantage of using a gamma match with a Yagi antenna? A. It does not require that the driven element be insulated from the boom. B. It does not require any inductors or capacitors. C. It is useful for matching multiband antennas. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Answer is A. It does not require that the driven element be insulated from the boom. G9C13, approximately how long is each side of the driven element of a quad antenna? A, quarter wavelength. B, half wavelength. C, three quarter wavelength. Or D, one wavelength. Answer is A, quarter wavelength. G9C14, how does the forward gain of a two element quad antenna compare to the forward gain of a three element Yagi antenna? A, about the same. B, about two thirds as much. C, about 1.5 times as much, or D, about twice as much? Correct answer is A, about the same. G9C15, what is meant by the terms DBI and DBD when referring to antenna gain? A, DBI refers to an isotropic antenna, DBD refers to a dipole antenna. B, DBI refers to an isospheric reflecting antenna, DBD refers to a dissipative antenna. C. DBI refers to an inverted V antenna. DBD refers to downward reflecting antenna. D. DBI refers to an isometric antenna. DBD refers to a discone antenna. Correct answer is A. DBI refers to an isotropic antenna. DBD refers to a dipole antenna. G9C16. What is a beta or hairpin match? A. It is a shorted transmission line stub placed at the feed point of a Yagi antenna to provide impedance matching. B, it is a quarter wavelength section of 75 ohm coax in series with the feed point of a Yagi to provide impedance matching. C, it is a series capacitor selected to cancel the inductive reactance of a folded dipole antenna. Or D, it is a section of 300 ohm twin lead used to match a folded dipole antenna. Answer is A, it is a shorted transmission line stub placed at the feed point of a Yagi antenna to provide impedance matching. G9D, specialized antennas. G9D01, which of the following antenna types will be most effective as a near vertical incidence sky wave antenna for short skip operations on the 40 meter during the day? A, a horizontal dipole placed between one tenth and one quarter wavelength above ground. B, a vertical antenna placed between one quarter and one half wavelength above ground. C, a left hand circularly polarized antenna. Or D, a right hand circularly polarized antenna. Answer is A, a horizontal dipole placed between one tenth and one quarter wavelength above the ground. G9, D02, what is the feed point impedance of an in fed half wave antenna? A, very low. B, approximately 50 ohms. C, approximately 300 ohms, or D, very high? Answer is D, very high. G9D03, in which direction is the maximum radiation from a portable VHF UHF halo antenna? A, broadside to the plane of the halo. B, opposite the feed point. C, omnidirectional in the plane of the halo, or D, toward the halo's supporting mast. Answer is C, omnidirectional in the plane of the halo. G9 
G9D04, what is the primary purpose of antenna traps? A, to permit multi-band operation. B, to notch spurious frequencies. C, to provide balanced feed point impedance. Or D, to prevent out-of-band operation. Answer is A, to permit multi-band operation. G9D05, what is an advantage of vertical stacking of horizontally polarized Yagi antennas? A, it allows quick selection of vertical or horizontal polarization. B, it allows simultaneous vertical and horizontal polarization. C, it narrows the main lobe in azimuth. Or D, it narrows the main lobe in elevation. Answer is D, it narrows the main lobe in elevation. G9D06, which of the following is an advantage of a log periodic antenna? A, wide bandwidth. B, higher gain per element than a Yagi antenna. C, harmonic suppression, or D, polarization diversity. Answer is A, wide bandwidth. G9D07, which of the following describes a log periodic antenna? A, element length and spacing vary logarithmically along the boom. B, impedance varies periodically as a function of frequency. C, gain varies logarithmically as a function of frequency. Or D, SWR varies periodically as a function of boom length. Answer is A, element length and spacing vary logarithmically along the boom. G9D08, how does a screwdriver mobile antenna adjust its feed point impedance? A, by varying its body capacitance. B, by varying the base loading inductance. C, by extending and retracting the whip. Or D, by deploying a capacitance hat. Answer is B, by varying the base loading inductance. G9D09, what is the primary use of a beverage antenna? A, directional receiving for low HF bands. B, directional transmitting for low HF bands. C, portable direction finding at higher HF frequencies. Or D, portable direction finding at lower HF frequencies. Answer is A, directional receiving for low HF bands. G9D10, in which direction or directions does an electrically small loop less than one-third wavelength and circumference have nulls in its radiation pattern? A, in the plane of the loop. B, broadside to the loop. C, broadside in the plane of the loop. D, electrically small loops are omnidirectional. Answer is B, broadside to the loop. G9D11, which of the following is a disadvantage of multiband antennas? A, they present low impedance on all design frequencies. B, they must be used with an antenna tuner. C, they must be fed with open wire line. Or D, they have poor harmonic rejection. Answer is D, they have poor harmonic rejection. G9D12, what is the common name of a dipole with a single central support? A, inverted V. B, inverted L, C, sloper, or D, lazy H. Answer is A, inverted V. G9D13, what is the combined vertical and horizontal polarization pattern of a multi-wavelength horizontal loop antenna? A, a figure A, similar to a dipole. B, four major loops with deep nulls. C, virtually omnidirectional with a lower peak vertical radiation angle than a dipole, or D, radiation maximum is straight up. Answer is C, virtually omnidirectional with a lower peak vertical radiation angle than a dipole. And that will conclude this video. Thank you for joining us. If you have not already, please go ahead and click the subscribe button so you're notified as we release new videos.